Well, with that being said, match point currently for Falcons AP Bren as we head into the land of Dawn. Spawn points have been set and players are moving out. It's going to be TLPH up on Blue's side up against Falcons AP Bren on the red. I'm loving how still they remain quick and dirty with their lineup, even if we did get the whole Julian jungle wrong. They just sent them in mid, same amount of burst, and then put a uh, Nolan in the jungle. Ooh. Flicker out by few. I mean, this is a similar situation to what we saw in game number one. They get that early trade against few to play in this mid lane, get an early battle spell, but all of a sudden they get punished and maybe it's going to come through their jungle in Kyle TZ. With that being said, guys, starting on Ju uh, July 24th, it's the female pro players time to shine. Catch the MLBB Women's Invitational 2024, where 12 teams from 11 regions break barriers and redefine esports. Super Marco catches a few beads there. Oh no, Kyle TZ put down a tenth of his health. Carl TZ looking for him. The answer from Ogwin. JP topping up Carl. Again, this is very reminiscent of game number two. In comes Ogwin. There's the knockup. Looking for the kill. Benny Cutie draws first blood. Carl TZ hunting. Finds a one. That's JP down. Super Marco puts them all back through. One for one. Man, I can't believe Few actually was capable of participating in that fight. And they got away with it as well, right? As, as for mentioned, you know, Kyle TZ, he makes things happen. He gets the kill. But at the same time, if Few was like, Level three, it could have been even cleaner, and yet he just teethered on the edge. Let's look at uh, the XP lane again. I'm expecting a lot to come from both Flapteasy and Sanford here. Uh, Flapteasy just allowing for this freeze to happen. Not so sure if he knows that Carl Teasy is uh, just around the corner. Turtle coming up in a few seconds from now. Real quick, look at the emblems. Mm -hmm. Based off of the emblems here, I'm rather surprised because Few is one of the few people that I would have imagined would like to have the lethal ignition. But now that he's in lane, it kind of changes the dynamic a little, right? Having the Impure Rage is actually not a bad idea, right? Especially when you can start chunking out some of the bigger members very, very slowly, but honestly consistent. Oh, look at this duel up top, like Rock and Cena going at it. Oh no, down bottom, let's switch it up. Turtle already uh -oh. started, the flicker uh -oh. in by Flap, no one home. Down goes Few, Sanford coming in, the Black Dragon form down to the Dragonoid. Flap looking to burst him down. Primordial Wrath already set in. Kyle TZ pushing them through, down goes JP, down goes Carl. Ogun finds him, even Forty's gonna fall. Marco finds him, three for one the trade. Falcons, AP Bren. A good rotation from the side of Falcons, AP Bren. Honestly, really split on that fight. Benny QT is still gonna be able to get entire Goal plating in the meantime, so it's not the end of the world, but three to four, baby. This is getting wait, hold up. Uh oh, Benny did get a lot mm. of bank there. I wonder if Ogwin's gonna get away. I mean, Flop's nearby. Carl Teasy, no one knocked up, and that's enough to help to disengage. Yep, and here we go. The diversion's coming out, and few might say no to this. Oh, they get out just in time, making sure that Carl Teasy is catching up with tempo, especially against a hyper mobile assassin like Kyle on a Nolan. All right, Bakshi Unity is quick. Divergence faster. Way faster. <laughs> he was going to get there anyways. So this is a small economic advantage for Falcons AP Bren. And Carl TZ is going off of the momentum from game number two. Honestly, he did well in the first maybe two thirds of that game mm -hmm. up until they were just starting to force fights. Now they got their eyes on the prize. They're still maintaining their priority and rotating much faster than Falcons AP Bren can respond. But... Man, Falcons AP Bren just always know how to welcome Liquid Echo, even if they are man down. Well, I think also because Falcons AP Bren, they always listen. Everybody can technically be a shot caller. And more importantly, whoever has the lead should be the one they're playing around. I think that Falcons AP Bren are listening to Kyle. Hey, I'm going to be ending up on this side of the map. Can we make anything happen by the time I get there? Mm -hmm. And here, Carthys is caught out by Ogwin. Sanford comes through as well. The answer, the final slash. Ogwin down to a tenth of his health, flickering on back. That's a Black Dragon form spent by Sanford just to disengage. That's a turtle coming up in half a minute. Yep, and that's also his his Petrify as well, right? That's pretty big. No Black Dragon form doesn't have the Petrify. By the time the next turtle spawns, he's not going to have many resources to really try to make things happen, right? So he's going to depend on JP's Minoan Fury to set things up. At the end of the day, right, Benny QT still needs plenty of time to scale and all. What? Minoan Fury used to disengage. Oh, it's just a close call. It's a close call, but it's a huge win for Falcon AP Brand. Oh, blazing the wet by Super Marco right in Benny Cutie's face. Answered with the entropy. Oh. Super Marco overheating. Kyle Teasy coming through. Gets caught out. 
Baby Cutie goes down, taken up by Oglin, but Kyle TZ falls as well. I don't think Oglin's gonna survive this. No, sir. That will help him get through. Vengeance in, but Sanji gets a double kill. The mid lane oh. genius. Another one off camera. What happened to Few? I think he may have walked up too far and got punished, but then how did he die? Where was the damage coming from? I mean, Sanford killed him at the end of the day, right? And he didn't have his Petrify, like we mentioned, and doesn't have the Black Dragon Form. Maybe he used the Black Dragon Form. It's tough to say. At this point, we were too focused on the top side of the map. At the drop of a hat, suddenly Liquid Echo have a turned it on Falcon's AP brand. They're up by a thousand gold. They pushed up top and they took the second turtle. What happened? Well, uh, man, looks like it could have been a mistake from Fuse's side. Hopefully we catch a replay of it later down the line. But for the time being, Benny QT, he's scaling up at a pretty, honestly, a decent rate compared to the first two games, right? He's got the Starlium Scythe. He already has second item, uh, sorry, second item Starlium Scythe, first item Feather of Heaven. And I think the rest of the team at this point in time are just slowly catching up. Up. The important thing here is that Falcon's AP brand, every time I call it, hey, no resources on Sanford, they've got to target JP. Instantly, they attack JP. Yeah, Benny Cutie's eating good, and I think you can do that calculation on the roamers, mm -hmm. but as soon as the rest of Liquid Echo come in and crash through, in true Liquid Echo Express fashion, uh, they just run through what's left of Falcon's AP brand. So this is an interesting turn of events already. Carl TZ picking up the Brute Force Breastplate. Sanford sent down back bottom to clear the wave. And we are going to uh, get to a pause real quick, try to figure out what's going on. All right, let's see. Well, luckily we still have our marshals up on the stage, ready to go and deal with these tech issues and help out these players as soon as possible. Don't worry, guys. We will get it done as, as fast as we can. In the meantime, it does give us a little bit of time to kind of like, honestly deliberate on the way that they're playing, right? Mm -hmm. Because now we're seeing that TLPH they're going down to, you know what? If we can't micro together as a team, let's break them apart and take them down individually, right? Maybe we can out-mechanic them 1v1. Which is not how you want to face off against Liquid Echo. TLPH, I'd say maybe as a close second, the whole Marco Benny situation, mm -hmm. they're all just mechanically ahead of their counterparts. So you don't want to go 1v1 with them. I mean, they'll take any, honestly, they'll take the scraps, right? Give them a couple of pennies. Next thing you know, they've already made a million dollar business off of it, right? <laughs> it's just so easy to do when you're that talented. And I think it's really knowing the extent of that talent for the slight advantages. I give one penny to one side, two pennies to the other. Hey man, I ain't touching the guy with two pennies. And that adds up, that adds up. So far in game one and two, it's been clear who gets two pennies mm -hmm. from Falcons AP brand. Now, after that turnaround, TLPH. Whoa. Carl TZ has always been in the zone. Carl TZ has always been up front, but I like how all the other members of the Cavalry are actually catching up. I mean, they are catching up, but Carl, he's, he's gone into that meditative say, and that's a scary thing to see, especially coming from the young goat. You don't know what else is in his mind. He could be playing out every situation possible. He could be thinking about, like, me as a jungler, what can I do to set up the best situation possible for our team? Even deeper than that, me as the leader of this squad, me as the flag bearer of our team, of this beautiful eSport. Like, there's a lot going on through Carl Easy's mind. Man, honestly, I hope that he does have a Kit Kat one of these days, because he needs a break. You can definitely tell that the frontal lobe of his head is going to start swelling the more and more people put the pressure on him. But he's the GOAT, and that's why he can skull it and handle it. And now I think we are back into the game. Once more, game number three, slight advantage over to Liquid Echo. Uh, again, a thousand and change between them. This is Falcons AP Brand chance to regroup. They got to make sure that whatever happened about two minutes ago couldn't, should not happen again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's look at the build so far, because right now, Carl TZ is actually going for quite a greedy build with the Brute Force Breastplate. He wants to be able to kind of keep up with pace, but more importantly, getting in and out of these fights is going to help a lot when you have the extra movement speed. Yep, uh, looking at the build on few right now, now, first up, the genius one. So that is uh, incremental advantage. The more you keep hitting, the more you uh, deal more damage. And Falcons AP Brand, I'm not so sure if, if they have the time to do that. Uh, With how fast Liquid Echo just, you know, at the drop of a dime, crash in. Oh, here's a push coming through. Benny Cutie gets in with the entropy. Oh. JP catches Few, dashing through with the flicker. Oh, Few's gonna die. Okay, I mean, Few, he needed a couple more seconds, but now at the turtle, it's all up to Carl. Oh. 
turtle here at a tenth of his health. Oh. Oh, DZ secures. Down goes Flap DZ. Marco blazing duet away. Carl stopping him right in his tracks. Another entropy from Benny. Down goes a Marco. Three for none. Never doubt him. Best in the world. Carl TZ does not miss on these retributions. Oh no. And they're gonna pull him over the finish line. They're gonna pull and drag TLPH to get there. They pick up the kill on Ogwin, and now the momentum shift in the crowd. Listen to their screams. The cavalry is alive. Make it a four for one. Falcons AP Bren left in shambles. Kyle TZ, he knows what's coming. Sanji goes into that bush via diversion. And what does that mean for the economy? Look at this, the oh holy crystal. This is Benny QT's trinity. Yep, and that's why they're up, up on that Amazon stage. <laughs> Benny QT is walking around like Jeff Bezos right now. He is packed. It's the Amazon arena. Yep, it is the Amazon reason for a reason. But look at him. He doesn't even care. They're still going. Carl Easy oh. from the flank. <laughs> Flap Easy taken out. <laughs> Sanford coming through. Can he stop Ogwin? The answer is yes. Down he goes. Another two free kills for the Cavalry. I mean, this game is starting to spiral oh, out of control. control. Oh, can Kyle dash through? He's leaving these rifts, these fractures. Oh, no. There's a diversion of top in that bush. Can Sanji stop him? Kyle, where are you going? He's cornered. They need some help, Carl. He's going to put him out of his misery. Where are you going, buddy? Retries him down to the ground. That's the shot. Uh, and that's the shot from Sanford. This has spiraled spiraled way out of control, but despite chasing all the time wasted and bought by Kyle, look at what Falcons AP Brand have done. They kind of reset that mid lane. They're coming down to clean up that bot side. Sure, take our tier two, whatever, as long as you don't extend this lead further than this. They're crawling. All this while Liquid Echo are galloping. For every inch Falcons AP move, Liquid Echo are a mile ahead. This is amazing. This is huge. I mean, yes, economically speaking, that's what, 3K, 4K? But look at the map get in. Unironically, this is the biggest lead we've seen from Liquid Echo in a while. In, in the whole it. series. <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Where's the TP going? Down oh, to the no. side? Oh, they, they don't. go ahead and, oh, phew. Ever the wily veteran puts up a huge wave there. I mean, this is plenty for Liquid Echo to deal with, but not like it's going to cost them much. Falcons AP Bren, they're, they're, they're really struggling, but every little move counts. I could see it. I could see the PTSD in few. I remember during the final, same thing happened, right? They took the Lord. He's trying to push. He gets caught out and dies. He's not going to make that same mistake twice in such an important series. And just as quickly, he switches up to the top after that recall. Tries to take care of as much of the wave as possible. This is an enhanced wave. Sanji clearing out the bushes. Sanford making sure that he can catch someone with a full combo hell, maybe even just a dash in with a petrify. They are going to push in through tier two up top. That's a holy shield still standing. What is this? There's a fight here. Ogwin flickering on out. Okay, still alive. Oh, they're going to deny Kyle Teasy his resources. What, what was Falcon they were doing? Why are they scattered? Why are they just shifting through the map? It's just to disrupt tempo, right? Because Falcon's AP Bread, they're not farming in this point of time. They are chasing Few down. And if Few can waste even more time, it's better for them. Oh, Look there's a dash, there's a flicker, and he's still running. He's, he's using the wilderness Three, blessing to its two, maximum. One. And the dash, he didn't even need to use mm -hmm. the cyclone. I mean, that's reverse psychology. I know you know that I'm not going to use it, so I'm not going to use it. Exactly. And he gets away. Exactly. And now he's come to a point in the game, especially with his items, that his CDR is going to make sure that he's roughly around seven seconds per ability. If not, if I'm correct, it should be around eight. We'll double check on the items in just a little bit. But because of these motions, it gives Falcons AB Brand an opportunity to kind of open up the opposite side of the map. They're trading vertically, technically, in terms of land masses, right? Let's cut the map directly in the the middle there's bottom side and top side and with what few did it opens up the top side which is all the more amazing for a lineup uh, such as falcons ap brands because they don't have the low yi they have to walk through everything they have to take everything by land uh the old-fashioned way and here we go we see it that, that's, mm -hmm. it's seven it's seven thank you so much observers now as we get back into this game sky piercer already purchased by kyle tz they're not gonna let benny qt stand and take the entire primordial wrath from flap tz again and survive we need to see 
Kyle Teasy step up or at least have him get set up. I think that's what's lacking, but that's because Liquid Echo are doing so well to protect Sanji, to protect Benny Cutie. I didn't even notice Sanji is yet to suffer death. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's having a perfect game right now. I mean, con considering that the previous game, he basically got a bronze medal for that performance in KDA. Now he's like, I'm making up for it. I better get MVP by the end of this. And he's on his way, well on his way. He's got about 30 seconds off of this flicker, an extra layer of protection. There's a Lord spawning about 10. Flap Teasy here, dueling with his TZ brother. Oh. JP coming up, Ogwin holding the line as well. It's paternal combat up in here. They're both holding on to their big ticket ults, but I don't think Falcons AP Brenner ready to fight. They still need a little bit more farm. You're looking at a 5K gold lead for the cavalry. They're thinking about their children. They're thinking about their families back at home, how important it is to win this match. It's a huge chunk of money. It's called TZ zones out Kyle. Ogwin gets caught out. That's a lot of ults spent to catch one, but I'd say it's worth it. Falcons AP Brenner a man down as Liquid Echo work on the Lord. A third of its health, a fifth, a tenth, and that's a secure for Benny Cutie. Well done. Well done by Liquid Echo here. Really bouncing back hard against Falcons AP Bread. This might just be a full comeback here because it looks like Liquid Echo are awake. 6K now, the gold lead for the Cavalry. Expected to grow a little bit more as soon as this Lord spawns. Liquid Echo will attempt a three-lane synchronized push. That's going to give Falcons AP Brand a lot to think about. And now in hindsight, getting I got to say, Falcons AP Brand from a scale of 1 to 10 on wave clear, they're barely a 6. It's not the greatest in the world. And definitely, yes, it's not like it's impossible to clear a wave. No, that's not what we're saying. It's just very dangerous to do so. you got to put your body in the line of fire. And if you walk up too far, Sanford could jump on you. JP could jump on Benny you. Benny could blast you. Mm -hmm. And we've seen how many times Benny has blasted people with a Natan at full build. Honestly, at three items is usually the usually enough. And now he's at more. Mm -hmm. And that's scary. 14 minutes in, all waves in sink Carl Teasy like a shark in the water just looking around circling through this mid tier two Lord with an enhanced wave up top Super Marcos he's what we're talking about it's so hard for them to defend and they're gonna lose this inhibitor maybe another and here's the black dragon form just for good measure Mm -hmm. They want to guarantee at least one inhibitor here. They've set themselves up pretty well. They've missed the checkmate angle, but they'll create as many advantages as possible for the next upcoming Lord when it does uh, show by. Let's see a mistake by Few here. Oh, Few dodging that unity. They are going to be successful in defending a mid inhibitor. Bottom lane as well. Falcons AP Brent still breathing. It's not bad other than the fact that the inhibitor that Falcons AP Brent decided to sacrifice was on the top side, knowing that the Lord was spawning on the top side. So this is not the worst for Falcons AP Brent. Could have been even more collateral damage. But let's take a look at the items, right? Because now we are seeing the dire hit coming out uh, from the important members like Few. He wants to be able to have that extra bit of kick, but it's not really going to matter until this game starts dragging just a wee bit longer. Oh, the DG, the Divine Glaive on Benny Cutie. Flap Deezy's going to feel that. Ogwin's going to feel that. It's just going to sting a little bit more for the softies for Falcons AP Bren, and that does confirm him on full build. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He's strong. He's really, really strong. But the same can be said about Super Marco, right? He's been scaling this entire time. And the only real advantage that Benny QT has is the fact that he can just press one button to dodge the Blazing Duet in that Winds of Nature. Same can be said about Nolan, but, you know, it's kind of pick and choose your poison. Yeah, uh, I think Falcons AP Brand have several layers of offensive capabilities to deal with. And for, for some, you might say that's good is because you have options, but no, if you're behind, that makes it all the more complicated for you to find a winning angle. Liquid Echo now up by about 8,000 gold here. That's 15 to six on the kill score. Lord spawning up in the upper quarter. And again, luckily, that's the lane that Falcons even have to protect, but I don't think that that makes this Lord easier to steal away. All right, let's find out because Fuse is just going to show himself down on bot side. Yep, and Liquid Echo is going to secure the Lord. Sanford is going to go ahead, land on his Dragonoid form. Kyle DZ looking for targets. No one home. Oh, That's no. the Wind of Nature pop hey, of Benny hey, 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 boys, boys. This is a clear go-to. Few looking for the back door. The Minoan and Fury coming through. The fight continues. They send Sanji home. Kyle DZ's down. Benny Cutie gets the kill. Few gets the push in. They're not letting him go home. That's a triple for Benny Cutie. And I think Few's going to lose his fight. Can Sanji get him? One more blast. There's the dance. Oh. And Sanji wins against Idol ng mga kids. And that's a 
wipe out Falcons AB Brenner off the map. Liquid Echo on the board. And now they're cracking up the base. They've turned it around. Oh my goodness. The cavalry.